Uh, three skulls. I like the look of that. What is this? Crystal skull. Uh, doesn't pay all that much. You lads might notice that I am negotiating for higher pay, but it's because we're in the, in the north. Uh, so in the south... Well, if I understand how it works, if you ask for higher pay and they say no, even if you accept, you get slightly less... Uh, you get slightly less reputation reward with the house, and I'm, I'm trying to push my relations to allied with the northern house. We're going to be one kite shield short again. 35 is clear. Shit, I probably should have healed up first. I think I'm also right about that. I, I, I'm pretty sure I read that in the in the wiki. See, so four to six marksmen. I think I want to fight during the day. I've got two fairly competent archers and two polearm lads. Get them. And looks like just the one tier two crossbow. Ow. I might actually want to whip disarm that uh, war brand. The war brand is another one of those weapons I'm half tempted to try making a everybody uses that one weapon build. I mean, it's cheap, it's easy to find. 50 to 75 times 2. It's fucking good. Ah. Weapon, nerd. Oh, fuck that up. Damn. Well, I had to move to high ground anyway, so. I mean, in Dom, I think so, because I'm going to be having to take a few attacks here. Crossbowman. Oh, come on, Onimaru. Nailed him. Uh, I'm tempted to step in. In. No, let's just in Dom in case this guy attacks us. Wait, it didn't come in. I don't want to give up my high ground. Oh, look at that. Even a one handed Warhammer. Aegis used Warhammer. It was super effective. with the head. Fucking wrecked. Come at us, nerd. Yeah, I suppose I should have expected that. But... Oh, you see? Love Warhammers. Shit. 
Actually, I'm not going to rotate out here. Oh, fuck, I didn't address that guy. Shit. Oh, Christ. I was going to say Onimaru is okay, but now he's low enough. He could get one shot here. Okay, split. Fair enough. And I, I love the blunt weapon injuries. They're probably the best, I think. Dislocated shoulder, uh, crushed ribs, minus 50% fatigue. Severe concussion, minus 50% to all combat attributes and stats. Crushed hand is minus 20% combat stats. So good. Get being murdered! That wasn't the right thing to do. Fuck, now Komen's in trouble. Charge! I mean, uh, some of the piercing injuries are fucking nasty as well, like the uh, pierced lung, minus, what, 50% your total fatigue, and uh, crushed windpipe is devastating as well. Uh, oh! Oh, hit points! Run, Komen! What chances were those? 20% and 20%, okay. Grazed kidney, yep, 50% hit points, that's a nasty one. Most of the time, if you inflict gra grazed kidney on an enemy, the next shot you land against them will finish them off. Oh, nice double kill. Uh, I don't think I need Indom here. Breaking is unlikely to land his hits. Broken arm is melee skill. Was it? It's melee defense and melee skill. We will be daggering this nerd down. Want his gear. Crunch. I still think of all the injuries in the whole game, I think that severe concussion is probably the worst. It's minus 50% melee skill, range skill, melee defense, initiative, fatigue. Basically, if you get severe concussion, you are fucking donezo. Someone please make a mod where you can just switch between primary and secondary weapon and I'll have to open up the f inventory. Fractured skull. Isn't it the same? You should look up the injuries. I'm pre they're, they're pretty much the same. Severe concussion and fractured skull. I remember seeing f minus 50% all over the place with those injuries. Hang on. Go uh, Battle Brothers wiki. The wikis lately are taking so long to load. I don't know what's wrong. Injury. We check the injury table here. That's not right. Uh, display capture. Uh, oh, now I remember. I had the display capture turned down. Ah, okay. That was for my Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, well, never mind that. That'll be back to normal in a sec. Let's see. Uh, uh, fractured skull. 50% to initiative, melee attack and defense, all that stuff. And severe concussion is exactly the same. Yeah. The severe concussion and fractured skull are the same. That was close. Komen almost put the dust there. Nice. 
Nice. Lamella Hornus, that should fetch us a nice bit of money. The Heater Shield is great. And the Winged Mace will be a nice bit of money as well. It's funny, I mean, this is a three skull mission. It's only paying us like a thousand one hundred. Are we going to make probably that much again, just in terms of the loot? Oh, yeah, two handed maces. Mm. So, to inflict an injury, you need to do 15 points of hit point damage. And 0 to 55 can ignore armor. So, most of the time, uh, the exception being with Battleforged modifiers. With just a straight Warhammer, you're probably going to be inflicting an injury 66% of the time, more or less. Scarbrand. So, for me, a lot of the times, I, I find that with two handed weapons, the extra point in. Um, Following, buddy, the extra extra point in crippling strikes is not even that worth it. A lot of the times, you would have inflicted an injury anyway. And so, eleven. The difference is here. I'm gonna have to compromise on something here because I took gifted on this lad. In this build, what would I compromise on here? I need bullseye. I need bags and belts. I need recover. I'm going to have to not take Killing Frenzy. Okay, so 15 hit points is to inflict uh, a morale check. Level 10. Take Bullseye for, for killing enemy archers. never seen an unhold injured before a couple times before i've managed to injure an orc warrior that's quite rare all right let's head back down to the south to konigswasser and go uh sell all the stuff we've collected hopefully this is going to konigswasser northeast i don't want to go that way how many boss weapons by boss weapons do you mean legendary items there's dozens of them e each weapon class has its own legendary items or by boss weapons, do you mean like the ones you get after like a little storyline? There's the legendary sword. You get through the Kraken storyline or the Witch Hut storyline. And then there's the two-handed cleaver you get from the ice cave. Or fame, that's all I can think of. Imp of the Senate. That undead. Uh, food's nice and cheap. Stock up on bread and dried food. We can constipate the lads with bread, uh, and then uh, <laughs> and the dried fruits will handle that problem. Noble sword, tuna cleaver, and a dagger. Uh, I, I really hope I can get my hands on that noble sword. It would be very, very dangerous. Like I imagine, it might be worth, especially if you get a superstar. Uh, company needs a mascot. I, th I thought we had a houndsmaster. Welcome, little brother. Do you have any pelts? Yes, let's make war dog armor. Where's the nearest? Banded warhammer. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. Manual, hammer time, my friend. Oh, baby. And we can just as well buy the next one we find for Levitsmere. Aegis is going to need a little while longer before it's hammer time for him. Uh, I think we did need bundles of throwing axes. Let's not spend unnecessarily now. We've got loads of stuff to go sell at Konigswasser. Oh, noble mail. 3,000. 
Okay, let's go sell this stuff and come straight back and get that noble mail. The noble mail is so rare. Ooh, a leader and only nine of them. Kill. I do wish there would be like a, another little updated um, decal there, or whatever, sprite, whatever it's called. You can see the, the arrow in my guy's chest, but that was obviously a headshot. It would be cool if there was an arrow coming right out of his forehead. Indeed. in the air Ooh. well actually that wouldn't be the worst way to go I reckon you would be just, you'd be instantly dead and you wouldn't really feel much great shooting wolf very nice oh shit don't destroy the armor quite enjoy that like imaginely randomly you pick up a, 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 a like a random heavy bolter off of someone hmm I think we should purge the Xenos with this weapon Gee, I might have wanted to net this guy Kind of doesn't fit because this is low fantasy, whereas well, low, low tech. I mean, whereas Warhammer is high tech. Nice dodging. Ow! The Aldol would be kind of like the little goblins, wouldn't they? They're zipping around and laughing at you and. And love the Eldor. All right, I forget there's two different forms of of, uh, of Warhammer. I could break his shield with one of these Warhammers, but we'll get through his defense eventually. You just need that first hit or two to get through. His morale breaks and he gets easier to hit. Murdered. In Dawn of War 2, Aldo were my favorite. Loved that game. Orc, Orc were like, you know, great and had a nice. Um, you really felt orky. You had, you, had, you had plenty of deco when you played the Orcs, but in the, in the multi. <laughs> lol. In the multiplayer games, I always loved playing Aldo and I would piss my friends off so much. I got pretty good at microing the, uh, what are they called again? The ones that zapped around all over the place. And you would run in with your banshees and just scream and then just destroy the morale of the enemies and... So much fun. Love the Eldar. I mean, orcs are... Uh, uh, well, orcs are... Orcs are orcs, aren't they? So, you know, that's straight conversion. Chaos could be like, you know, uh, cultists that have been possessed by Dove Cool. Skaven could be like smaller little goblin type things.
Fast stabbing. I do miss having a decent dagger specialist as well. Walk forward with a rusty button knife. Stab, stab. Dead. AoE morale shatter. Off. Profit. Bandits would probably be Imperial soldiers. Imperial soldiers that have d ran away and uh, deserted. Nice little fight. We are going to make a fucking fortune now when we sell all this stuff in Blank and... Uh, was it Konigswasser? Blank and Wasser. Blank, blank and Stutt. Oh, piss off! This is dreadful. Let's just run. It's not worth the risk of fighting that dangerous hedge knight. And marks when I've started with height advantage. It's usually a recipe for dead brothers. How's the armor looking? It's actually looking pretty good on most of the lads. It's just Paragon whose armor is ruined. No, um, does, does, uh, armor pierce get modified by, by headshot? If that's so, then maybe, but for me, the best part about a dagger specialist is the morale break. Or, like, I felt like most of the time the, the actual damage is great, but it's almost secondary to the way it just, it just causes absolute fucking chaos. And obviously, you don't even need to take Fearsome with it because you are, you know, rolling for a morale check every time you hit. I'd rather put that extra point into Executioner. Let's just stay and fight and see how this goes. It's a very good point. And I mean, I, I, I'm weighing up taking Headhunter on my Axes Only Peasants. But again, you have exactly that problem. You hit the body three or four times. It builds up your chance to hit the head. And then you finally hit the head. Whereas you prefer to be hitting the body. The body doesn't have any armor on it. Torturers, get your whips out. Get ready to disarm that hedge knight. I actually attack from that. He's at shift my lines here. Oh, Emmanuel, you can stay where you are, and then these lads can move forward, I suppose. If he just stays back while we hoover up all of these lads, that'll be great. He's coming forward. Well, in that case, I think you're quite right. And if I do make a dagger specialist, it will be someone as headhunter. Yes. I mean, can you imagine with headhunter, executioner, crippling strikes, and killing frenzy? Say, if you have a legendary dagger that you use puncture, you hit someone in the head. So let's say it's it's call it 25 to 35 damage for a legendary dagger. Straight through armor, plus 50% for hitting the head. That's 37 to let's call it call it 50. 37 to 50 straight to the head. Very. I like my dagger specialists, but every time I've had one, by the time I hit, you know, day 250 plus, I just can't help but think that him, he usually sits in the center of the formation. I can't help but think I'd be getting more out of a two-handed weapon user. Shot, MK. Or oh, is that hit chance? 31% chance. I mean, look at that. That was a, what's a one in three, and it's not bad. And I've never put a single point into his ranged skill. It's a straight up P 
pure bonus damage that I wouldn't have had in another situation. Disarm anybody? I don't think so. Choppy chop these nerds. But I always find that those two weapon classes are so fragile. They are not the best weapon classes. Right, Paragon, your job is to keep that hedge knight disarmed. We have a lot of raiders to kill before we can start daggering him down. We're gonna have to alternate our torturers to keep him keep him disarmed. Well. So you seem to be quite a fan of uh oh fucking hell. A fan of duelist and i've always thought of the potential uh, synergy between the extra armor piercing from from uh from duelist and the and the damage as well like maybe a, a one-handed flail used as a duelist so if you use lash and hit in the head you're getting armor pierced you're getting damage boost you're getting lots of good stuff but i do find that those weapons just don't do enough damage you gotta get aegis out of there Ration. Nice, let's open that up for ration. You not attack there, are you nerd? He's still in danger, and like here's where I need Aegis to have access to a whip so he can still do something. He is out of this fight. <clears throat> punching nerd. Wouldn't it be annoying if that punching actually added fatigue? I don't mind. Uh, oh, your list builds, but I just I love my two-handed weapons way more. If I had a choice between a two-handed weapon and someone using your list, I'll take the two-handed weapon nine times out of ten. Hmm. Imagine the the decapitate is is amped by all the other damage amp. I'm pretty sure it also works with Executioner as well. So if you have the damage amp and you're attacking a target who is injured, you probably execute from like 40, 45% of total hit points. They just, just stay back and hurl insults. Well, I've come to really love my torturers because they are filling a lot of the same function that I would want out of my two-handed mace guy. Or aim any mace specialist really so rather than just keeping him stunned you can just disarm him he's equally equally harmless a paragon has got enough fatigue to be able to disarm this turn the next turn ration you have to take over the disarming uh Gagnia, why don't you start stabbing this dude in the belly Oh shit. Emergency. Emergency, everyone. We're okay. Should probably focus. This is a pretty saucy fight, this. You 83% chance missing nerd. Got. 
Nice. It's the problem with the Warhammer, you can get held up by a guy with just a shield. Rondocks, rest. Hmm. I suppose all, all the duelists do kind of the same thing. It's 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 the armor pierce. So that to me says take a weapon that doesn't that really needs armor pierce, you know, like a sword. Oh, and what what I've found with my uh, professional soldiers of all of my peasants with axes is that okay fine you could go straight through all the armor but you're doing so much damage you may as well just you know, just destroy the armor with your axe when you have mass fighting axes so fucking dangerous it's wonderful get him boy stab him in the guts yeah you better run This dude is bane of my existence. There you go, get executed, nerd. Cool. Whipped to death. Tortured to death. Sounds like a metal album. This is my favorite, the old stobby stab, the old surrounding stab. Dagger in the guts. It does sound pretty nasty, I would not want to go up against that. Oh, one thing I would encourage people to, oh god, we don't have space for, we want to make some hard choices here. Uh, I think one way to think about builds you want to do is try to imagine the lineup that you would least want to go up against yourself. And that's for me how I came up with the hammer cleaver uh, combination that ended up not really being that effective. But it just occurred to me that I would hate to fight enemies that start off with warhammers and once they cut through all your armor, they then switch to cleavers and chop you to pieces. Must be I thought, but it turned out to be not all that effective. 180. 350, that's worth way more. Speaking of Caesar, it reminds me of that scene in Rome. I fucking loved that show. It was so good. When they killed Caesar. Spoiler alert, guys. When they killed Caesar, it was pretty traumatic, actually. Seeing him die and suffer, it was fucking... Well fought, chums. Ah, oh, it was an incredible show. I read a super interesting article uh, a couple of years ago that uh, quite rightly pointed out that everyone who's a fan of of uh, of Game of Thrones should thank Rome for Game of Thrones' existence, because Rome, in very many ways, laid the foundation for uh, the studios to have the confidence to sink the kind of money uh, into into Game of Thrones. That's a tragic run. Only got two seasons. That that show should have ran ten seasons. It was so fucking good. Thirteen. I love that show. Pulo was the best. Cool. Actor's name or uh, Ray Stevenson, I think. Ray Steve. Yeah, that, that one four six zero for ancient gold coins. That is a lot of money for those coins. Uh, I think let's not hang on to the great axes, but we will hang on to the long axes because when it comes time to fight Shrut, I'm going to want long axes on the back line to break their shields and then fighting axes on the front front line to break shields and do straight damage. Let's see, we need seven. Seven. 
Ching ching. Two eighty. I think that's probably nice and heavy, which we can give to Lavit Smear. Three one five. Three hundred for thirty eight. He's look at that. He's already wearing coats of scales. I don't think any of the replacements are actually able to wear heavy armor though, so I can go ahead and sell that. Everyone is light armor wearing. Uh, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. I forget. Pula was a murderer. Murderer! He killed Alfino. Murderer! Yeah, Pula was a badass. Loved him. Sell the military cleaver because we've got the Kopeshes. Am I really going to hang on to Kopeshes and take up three inventory slots? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, do I need that crossbow? No, I do not. Oh, got plenty of nets. Who needs the dagger? Anyone carrying a butter knife by any chance? Also, I should start investing in rondel daggers. It's a small but good little damage boost to have. Cash money! True, yeah. Let's not forget, he, he did he did murder, murder Irene's uh, fiance. And then she goes and falls in love with him afterwards. And I never, never, never bought that. I always thought that was a bit dodge, but... Cree it was. Levitz me that I want a power level to heaven. How close is he? Yeah, it's worth it. Let's spend a thousand. And we should hit these cities in the south here that have weapon masters so that we can hopefully find him a two handed weapon. Mavada, Rotten Lodge, burnt into the ground. Where is it? Keep to the west. I think I find it. We'll clear that out once we have a uh, troll mission to do. I loved that show. There were so many amazing storylines. Like, it was so tragic that uh, uh, Varinus' wife killed herself, and it was all just a misunderstanding. And it was like, oh, God. Second wind potion? Yes, please. Protective runes and sigils? Eh? That's new. Plus 20 resolve at morale checks against fear, panic, or mind control. Ooh. Hmm. That could be well worth creating in bulk if we can. And we give it to the back line because they don't really need the, the wolf armor. If I like a, a couple of sets of spare leather scale with sigils on, then if I'm fighting resolve testing enemies, then we'll switch switch that out. The front line. That is so cool. I've never actually seen that. Hmm. I've just, I've never seen that. Uh, this is new too. Happy powder. Oh, look at the old, the old booger sugar. <laughs> this miraculous powder instantly turns a grumpy, ill-tempered mercenary into an into a happy and energetic one. Do not operate heavy machinery while under the influence. I think let's just craft at least one. Okay, although I want... I am going to need four Night Owl Elixirs before I take on the goblins. But then again, we're not anywhere near taking on goblins. Let's do protective runes. Well, i, I got to fight more witches. I, I need those crafting materials. Yes, 2,200.
And 448 for a rondel is so cheap. Is it just me or are we making like huge strides, a lot of progress? And I mustn't forget to go back to that city to the west and buy the uh, legendary noble male. I think we need to f we need to farm some unhold. I want bone plates. If I put bone plates onto that noble male, and that'll have to do until we can kill some lindworms and eventually have the lind lindworm upgrade onto noble male is about as good as we can do if as long as as far as non legendary armors go. So 160 for 15, 140 for 18, 297 EHP, 77 EHP. And the improved armor trickles its way down. Uh, he's actually wearing a male shirt. Actually, I think Anton should be prioritized, but I mean, Ikri will hit level 11 soon. And then once he's level 11, he'll go into reserve unless he's in one of the hardest fights. Still need fucking uh, hunters. Yeah, that's great for the uh, additional fur. It lowers the armor piercing damage. Particularly important for heavy armor wearers, but I much prefer with my heavy armor wearers just to give them the padded plates and the the uh, the armor fatigue reduction thing. Just without the extra padding, you just got to be careful. I really think I should spring for Ikri and, and buy him a bullhook. I mean, he, he's proccing his berserk so often and this bullhook is just so good. And I needed an extra uh, two-handed item anyway. Right, so, David Smear are almost ready to join frontline lads hammers so unfortunately the lads aren't leveled quite uniformly but Emmanuel needed Colossus to get his hit points up and killing frenzy is great but it's a luxury perk we made a fucking fortune and spent it almost immediately but what money is for it's for spending isn't it did we treat that wound We did. Hopefully it's it's healed up before we get into this fight. Just gonna say before these guys got into range. Should have camped my lad heal up. Oh, hello, first Krumvada. Let them do the fighting, we can get paid. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Oh, bad dogs, heal! Stay! They really need to introduce that. I mean, there's two things that I think need to be in the base game, is issuing commands to dogs, even if it's only a hounds master, and even if it costs AP, you tell dog, stay, sit, good boy, attack, that type of thing. That and a switch weapon button, so I don't have to keep opening the inventory. Oh, XCOM tomorrow night, hell yes. <clears throat>
I do use the dogs. I'm just very careful with them because obviously it's like 400 gold that you're just throwing onto the battlefield. I tend to only throw them down if I'm trying to stop something from fleeing. I know the dog's in no, uh, no danger. Or if I'm just in a desperate situation trying to keep a brother down and I'm hoping to give it a target for the enemy other than the brother. <clears throat> But I mean, how can a how can a houndsmaster not be able to issue commands to a dog? I mean, really. Agreed. So the sergeants that you see here got nimble, but I could have sworn that they have uh, battle forged as well because their body armor doesn't get damaged a lot. But if they had battle forged, you'd see the icon there. So I guess not. Huh? Well, ration whip out my man wait until there's an unarmored nerd for you to whip oh that actually was silly now, with 51 initiative, I think this Orc Young will act first. Alright, oh, he still has an attack this turn, so I need to use Indom. Why not? Let's rotate. Let's get stuck in. I have to admit, I, I, I was sleeping on Indom. I didn't realize how good it was. I also tried briefly a build where I was stacking Indom plus Overwhelm plus Adrenaline on a bunch of my lads. But it turned out to be way too fatigue intensive. I did, I did quite like a sort of shock and awe build uh, where you have Adrenaline and overwhelm and then if you use a warhammer you just use adrenaline to make sure you get to attack first so you're always staggering the enemy and you're always applying at least one hit of overwhelm but for a single single attack weapon it proved to not be worth it if i take the adrenaline on anyone it'll be on a pole arm user because they are most of the time safe on the back line one class that i think uh it's pretty much mandatory on would be a shield breaker which is my uh, long axe specialist very often they will break a shield adrenaline start the next turn then follow up before the enemy can do anything that one hit no armor Kill Stealer. He bleed to death, he did. <laughs> I don't know why people bleeding to death is so amusing.
quick boys kill him save the dogs Looking at our, our current build that we have here, the only way we could probably improve it in terms of damage output is to change the torturers for greatsword users. But I love the utility with the disarm uh, and the decapitate from the torturers. I feel like it, it's, it's, it's one of my better builds. Probably my, this is my strongest group. 12 of, in, in a 12 brother group, certainly it's my strongest. Can't get into the fight, but I can still be useful. Get back, doggy. I got this. I don't got this. Ah, <laughs> you bled to death. Oh. oh, the dog got a kill. Holy shit. How many dogs have killed orc warriors in this game? Speaking of dogs, getting my hands on a uh, superstar brother that is a houndsmaster would be nice. I've still never been able to have the houndsmaster's event uh, proc where you get a wolf. The great swords. The thing is, they are they are incredibly effective all the time. They're such good weapons. They're just not very flashy. Oh, awesome! Seven hundred and twenty after I just spent double that by the other guy, Pike. Perfect. I could maybe buy this and give it to my Bannerman. Because the battle standard uh, is 30 and 100%. Whereas this is 30 and 150%. 60 to 90. 50 to 70. Nah. Okay, thanks. That, that's a good tip. Didn't know that. And uh, is it one of those only procs once? events this wouldn't be amazing to get multiple wolves pretty there's no purple helmet paint needs that dagger i don't think anyone really needs it oh yes we'll hang on to it for the the polom lads we'll have bags and belts and we'll need a dagger at some point <sighs> let's keep at it boys keep grinding did i put these protective runes on the noble male? No. Once behind master, that's a pity. Uh, these this this new Shemshia is is interesting. Forty five to fifty. That's very nice base damage. Look at that, two-handed flanged mace. What I always find interesting about the, the the flanged mace is the damage is listed as 75 to 95, but when you read the tooltip, it's like more than that. I always thought it was interesting. Uh, do I need any more stuff here? I do not. What we need is a taxidermist. That we can trading parties we can do. Um, I'm not gonna do this now. I don't want to exhaust anybody. 
for this big fight. Let's see. Subtle, you say? Dawnthal, Tevin, Fletcher. Yes. Well remembered. Edge Knight, Marksman. We just fought against this setup. Let's just make sure we have the nets go. His whips are so good. Is it worth giving kite shields? I don't think so. Let's see if we push forward into them. We should only have to handle a single volley of, of range shots. Mostly level one anyway. The King's God event? No, what is that? Mm, full plate! Full plate armor, full plate. Yes! Can I get an angle on any of these now? And I can miss. Shot, Komen. Oh, sweet. So Barrister don't sell me. Yeah, I was recently re-watching Game of Thrones and I got up to season 5. And I forgot how fucking irritated I was. Wait, can I get an attack off? I can. Where Sebaristan is supposedly... Oh, fuck, I don't know if quick hands. He's supposed to be the biggest badass in the fucking world, but then he goes down to a, a bunch of... Slaves? Are they hired swords? Just in robes and with daggers? I mean... Ugh. And they spend so long telling you how amazing the, uh, the Unsullied are, and then as soon as they are fighting in circumstances which you would think would perfectly suit their fighting style, Phalanx, shield, spears, lock up. They just circle and allow themselves to be allow them to, allow themselves to be surrounded, picked off one by one. Ugh. Annoyed me so much. Also, never understood who the who the hell were the sons of the harpy. They couldn't have been noblemen. They would have been slaves paid by noblemen. But I mean, so how, how they take? Oh, just, I uh, just, uh, don't, don't get me fucking started. <sighs> I'm busy reading the, uh, listening to the books on audiobook, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to uh, listen to it all the way. It's narrated by a guy called Roy Dotris. He's a very fine voice actor, but unfortunately, he only has one voice. Uh, like he has his normal speaking voice, like a upper crusty type of English guy. But then every time he does a nobleman, his voice starts to talk like this through his nose. So then he'll say, and Ned, and you know Ned Stark has been gruff Sean Bean. And he goes, and great. Ned turns to his son and say, someday we'll talk about your mother. I'm like, oh, just, oh, what the fuck, dude? Really? He makes every noble character sound like a, like a puff, a, a fop, sorry. Uh, but personally, I always think that uh, books should be read by their authors. Especially when you know what the author sounds like. Yeah, well, he didn't fight Strong Balwas, did he? Strong Balwas was his own character in uh, in Marine. It was when Daenerys pulls into Marine and she's just hearing about the fighting pits and I heard some sort of Sort of small part in it, I seem to remember. Yeah, strong Balwes. Fucking badass. Are we? We need a net on this dude's stat. Oh.
So if you enjoyed Game of Thrones, I have to recommend uh, you check out a YouTube channel, a girl called Lindsay Ellis. She's a film critic and, you know, filmy type person, but her, she's done two videos breaking down Game of Thrones and what's wrong with it and how it went wrong. The first one's 45 minutes, the next one's like an hour and a half. It's absolutely incredible. Loved it. And uh, the one thing she said that really, really made sense, like, cause I, I've, I've been puzzling for a while about what makes season eight so bad. And the point she made is that you can tell it's not great writers because the decisions being made by the the, the, the cast or the, uh, you know, the, the the characters, it's because the writers know where they have to end up. So rather than the actors, oh, sorry, the, the characters acting in character, I mean, you'll notice that Tyrion becomes a fucking moron in the last two seasons. It's because, like, that, that the writers want to shoehorn in the characters to where they know they need to go. And it's just made so much sense. And because they knew they had to wrap, wrap that shit up. I have to stop complaining about Game of Thrones. My regular viewers must be so tired about hearing me piss and moan about how that series was fucked up. But for real though, I was re-watching Game of Thrones the other day and I, in season two and then like little things like um, Tyrion, he, what's it, using, he, he, he told a different story to Littlefinger and and Varys and the third one was to, uh, uh, Pycelle to figure out who the Queen's spy was. I was like, yes, genius, of course, remember Tyrion used to be smart. And if anyone was going to kill Daenerys, it should have been Tyrion. Jon Snow, oh, you're my queen. Stab, stab, stab. Puke. And Drogon comes in. I'm angry. Symbolism. Raw. <sighs> here's my here's my one second review of season eight. <laughs> Come on, Gangnia. <laughs> well, one thing people we have to bear in mind, though, is like if you say season eight is so bad, it's it's not okay. So hmm. I kind of think that the like a form of selection bias is at play, though, because I okay, can find it's bad. Like let's say it's this much bad, but then when you compare it to the incredible first four seasons, all of a sudden it becomes that much bad. So. You have to be a little bit careful to not be completely unfair to it. I mean, it's still impeccably filmed and shot and acted and... It's just the writing, it went down the toilet. David and Dan. Why didn't they just... If they were sick of it, and you could tell they were sick of it, why... Just, just take two years off. It's fine. Take a break. I mean, like, you, you can't tell me they wouldn't, they didn't want to take that much time off for worries about continuity because Cersei was apparently pregnant for like two years and didn't show. And fast travel is a thing when you're running from the from the wall to, you know, to the Dreadfort. It just shows you that D&D &D just aren't that good a writers. They just aren't that good. But actually, let's think about it. So they, they did... Five, six, seven, and eight. There, there was some really good writing in six. I, I thought the Ramsey Bolton stuff was some of the strongest, with how shocking and brutal and you know just incredible it was. That was probably some of the strongest stuff. Uh, let's take care of that. So it's not like they they can't write that that they can. It's just they. But yeah, I mean, like if you look at the difference between you know season one to four. And I think that's where the source material stopped. And then, uh, but we, we should have known when season five came around and you got that line, you want a good girl, but you want the bad pussy. And, oh, that, that should have been the <laughs> long bells right there. Like, what the fuck? Who writes that? I would have written that in my 14-year-old fan fiction. Bad pussy. Uh... 
Mage's Warhammer, you need Raider Berserk, Killing Frenzy, Cover, uh, Underdog, Dog. and then we'll go Indom and Reach. 68, he borderline needs Colossus, but I think if we can go for Indom and Reach Advantage, we'll be nice and defensive. Should be relatively safe. Underdog as well. Bam. He was watered. Who was watered down? Um, uh, 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 Ramsey. I think it was worse than the books. I have to admit, I haven't read the books since I was in high school, and that was 1996. Long fucking time ago. The actor who played him was fucking amazing. I love like the little things like when he's when he's, when he's taunting Theon and he waves the sausage. <laughs> It's, it's funny what jumps out of my out of my mind remembering from this the, uh, from the whole show as a whole there were so many little moments that i really hated like when um yara goes back to save uh reek or theon reek as he was and then so the ironborn are like trapped in that kennel with ramsey and like six guards guarding the door they make it out somehow and ramsey is just wearing he's completely shirtless and he's just fighting with a mace in one hand and a dagger in the other. And he's fighting Ironborn with like full, at least leather armor and a cuirass and a shield and a sword. Axe and a shield. <sighs> that plot armor is pretty powerful, but for fuck's sake. I also hate how like in a lot of uh, forums and like in Reddit and stuff you can't really complain about how stupid it is that Arya ended up killing the Night King without going her dear misogynist you just hate women it's like no it's not that it's just that like this whole whole um, bringing John back he was brought you were brought back for a reason apparently not I mean he was just there to scream at an undead dragon he didn't you know wasn't really any reason he was brought back I mean what did he do since he was brought back really Obviously, he brooded quite a lot. He ended up not uh, becoming king, so it wasn't that. He didn't end up ending the ending the undead invasion. It was just anyone with a big leap and a little. <sighs> nice uh, third warhammer. We need that. <laughs> If any of you who, who watched Game of Thrones and loved it, if you haven't watched the Game of Thrones documentary, uh, what's it called? I think it's called on, on Now Our, Our Watch Has Ended or something like that. Hour and a half HBO special. It was amazing. I really loved it. Because I loved the actors so much. And uh, if I didn't have a crush on Emilia Clarke before watching that, I certainly do now. Seems like such a cool chick. And also, so think about, well, just answer me this now. So we have many amazing training montages to make Arya a badass for fighting in the dark. When did she use the dark fighting other than when she fought the Waif? And, and really, fighting the Waif was kind of just like her, you know, graduating from faceless school. They spent so much time on establishing on what an incredible fighter she is and for what? And they spend so much time kind of bigging up on how she's a badass and not afraid of anything. But then during a bit of, uh, uh, during uh, what the, the Khaleesi's exterminatus on uh, on King's Landing, she just completely has like, you know, a mental breakdown and freaks the fuck out. But out of everything that pissed me off, it, it was, I, I think they did Danny, they did her so dirty. She had no problem with the people at King's Landing. Her issue was with Cersei. It just it made no sense. And then if you go back and watch season three where she gets lifted up by the slaves in Marine and they're all calling her Misa and it's such a cool moment and that's like defining of her character of who she is. She's there to right wrongs and she's about the common people. She's not about nobles. 
No, but Cersei hurt her feelings, so fuck him. Let's just melt the entire city. <sighs> oh, but Jon... They like Jon Snow better. <laughs> I'm gonna kill everyone. Yeah, her, her taking out of the phrase was fucking epic. I love that. And killing... Um, oh, fuck, what was his name? Uh, Meryn Trent. The way she took out Marin Trent was amazing as well. I kind of wish uh, Surya Forel would have had more screen time as well. I am the first source of Bravos. What do we say to the God of Death? Not today. Like, I didn't mind that he wasn't bald like he was in the books or anything. He, I thought he was great. The actor did a fucking great job. I love the way he says, just so. And side side face. Overdone. No, fuck him. I, I I had so much uh so much satisfaction watching him get his comeuppance. Well it was fucking brutal, don't get me wrong. But he deserved it. He was he was quite a shit owl, Trent. And again, going back to Lindsay Ellis and her incredible work she did on that YouTube series. She pointed out something I never thought of before. Because like I, I I loved I loved um Sansa's Sansa's arc. I thought no, Sansa's becoming a badass, you know, learning and all that. But then this Lindsay Ellis girl pointed out that it's kind of like it's it's almost like a chauvinistic way to write women, where it's like the only way you can show female empowerment is women becoming less nurturing and less caring and more cold and more cynical. It happens to all the strong female characters in the show, all of them. Whereas Sansa was, was now I'm just, you know, uh, quoting this uh, Lindsay Ellis girl, but like Sansa was great earlier in the show and she was smart, like how she would um, talk to Joffrey and she was saying to him like, okay, of course she'll be in the vanguard, my brother always is and yada yada and how she helps her Dantos and, and that's because she's just a good, a good person. But then she, she, by the end of the show, she's not that good person. She's just this cold, calculating female version um, of Littlefinger. Because women can't be empowered unless they're cold, unfeeling, you know, men, basically. That was such a good point. Okay, I'm going to link you guys. You have to watch that girl's videos. It was so good. She doesn't need the traffic. She's got like a million subscribers. She's amazing. But love her content. Oh, damn, Emmanuel. See, only 55% chance to hit, but I suppose he is, is, uh, is wavering. I need his dastardly to be removed. <laughs> the Ellis friends. There you go, lads. Enjoy. Got. Nice double kill for the Bannerman. Wait, there's a shield on the ground, isn't it? There? there it is. Nice, and that's the third Warhammer we've wanted for a little while. Oops, son of a bitch. Uh, I knew I should have used Indom there. Silly. Art. Is this piece of shit gonna act before going near? He is. Get hit. Oh, right in the head. Warhammer, right to the chops. Nice. Fucking. 
Warhammer. Love it. I really should call one of my Warhammer users King Robert. Give him a big black beard. Gods are a strong dead. <gasps> Seen it. it. Would also be great if you could give your your brothers like a you know a fat portrait. <laughs> Choppy McChoppertin is a pretty good name, I suppose. Ch uh, Ch Choppy Vanderchop. Your hand, Vanderchop. The host heal home. As we should always be offloading the stuff at that big city. It's gonna be so good for us. What is this? Um, uh, okay. How much are we talking? Seven days. Uh, oh, I thought this was civil war. This is a straight, straight uh, patrol. Perfect. Perfect. For a, a brief second, I was considering going to war with one of the other houses, but God. Dude, Orc Berserkers. <laughs> to put it, I didn't save it. I had an old clip on my channel where back when uh, caravan hands and peasants would just sprint forward towards Berserkers. And it was my lads with a, a group of peasants and they just sprinted forward towards like two or three berserkers and then within a few turns the berserkers had multiple stacks of rage and uh yeah didn't go so well yeah you don't do, you don't you don't, you don't feed them dogs So what I didn't realize about rage was that it makes them harder to kill. I just thought it just increased their damage, but it's actually... Okay, this is a perfect fight to get some XP on my low-level boys. How oh, is armor looking on the front line? It's okay. Oh, so close, boys. We've got two out of the four two-handed Warhammers we need, and our other Warhammer boys are almost level 11, so it's almost hammer time for them. I really don't want to fight these things in a swamp, though. Oh. Hope they move. Oi! Move! There you go. Oh, for fuck's sake, Dunkelberg Company! Can't go anywhere without the sodding militia showing up and enemies for you. Shit ton of orc young with fighting. Fighting in a swamp is just a bummer. And I'm, I'm not about to give a Pathfinder to everybody. Reminds me. Uh, Rondox. <laughs> but I mean, I still reckon that in, in Battle Brothers, it's it's the best way to learn. Learn by doing. Doing in this case is getting your lads turned into a fine paste by some berserkers. I'll never forget the first time I encountered uh, Orc Am Is it the Ambusher? Or it's Ambusher, the little ranged ones. With my level 11 lad in his full 300 300 armor and a great sword. I'm like, let me just chop this little goblin up. No, no. Notch blade. Stab, stab, stab. Dead. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it's about time we did this ambition. Let us visit the lost city and then we should hit one of these ruins that have undead in them. Oh, 
How about there? Brigands. That won't have 24. I need... Goblins. No thanks. Goblins. Pew. Thanks. Undead. There we go. Really? Really? Marksmen and raiders. You guys are taking us on? Piss. My Warhammer lads don't have their shields out. I think the front line should scramble there and we put the back line there. We really need a weapon switch mod. old boy nice I'm so impressed with how effective our two archers have been if you consider how crap their stats are they really have no right to be you know, even decent this shows you that once we eventually get our hunters uh, in a much better space, but did, this, did that dude try to move? He did. Dumbass. leg still ouchy very ouchy you lucky there's something about the blunt weapons where they go thunk and then someone just dies the maces make the best thunk especially the, the two-handed mace in your back what happened dude Jeez. I love polearm users it's the only 82 melee skill at, at level 10 and I mean I've had monks before and this is far and away the deadliest monk I've ever had oh oof assist Ugh, nasty well, I'll be in a similar spot. I'm, I'm, I'm in for some pain in, in the coming months and years. I'm getting my teeth sorted out. Gotta get a wisdom tooth taken out. And then a bone graft. I had a molar removed and now that's made the bone with her. So they can't do an implant without doing a bone graft. And the implant put in and I'm gonna wear braces for like a year and a half. Horrible. But I should have had my teeth fixed years ago. That's gonna be horrible having my friends take the piss out of me for having to wear braces, but just gotta get it fucking done. I should have had it done when I was in high school already. The only thing I told the uh, orthodontist was, you don't give me the headgear. They just laughed and said the technology has moved since then. They don't have to give headgear anymore. Like, I think these days, if you give a kid, you know, the braces with the whole headgear that goes into the mouth, that's fucking child abuse, man. You, you can't do that. Brutal. Choppy chop, bleed, lol. Yeah, I don't know what these brigands were thinking were attacking us. The only way they could have helped us more with this patrol was to cut their own heads off and leave them for us in a pile. Oh, 
solo army user plus three, very nice. You know what? Why don't we give him an extra bit of ranged skill so he can cost a bit more? I mean, his fatigue is plenty, his hit points is plenty, resolve is plenty, and then plus one on ranged defense is not worth it. Right, okay. We want bags and belts. I can carry a dagger. That. And he can carry unwell potion. Nice law, Ikri. Oh yeah, you, you have to have nimble. That's pretty decent. I I could have I could have gone harder in terms of the damage, but for my polearm and my backline guys in general, I really like the quick hands, bags and belts combo. It allows your back back line to shoot a crossbow and quick hands to their main weapon and have space for a dagger and shield if they have to dagger down someone for armor. And it allows them to carry a support item or a net. It's a very good point about the XP. The XP. One thing I've got to remember is to buy uh, Speedum. I need to replace all of those spears we've got with Speedum. Uh, that's getting repaired. And technically, we're still trying to get to the cocking taxidermist in Sattel, but we, so many missions keep rocking. I mean, now that we've got 13, we may as well do this, but an hour and a half. Let's just stop here. YouTube friends, hope you all enjoyed this episode. We are almost there with the full build. Let's see, level 11, 11, 10, 11, 10, 10, 11. Hopefully by the next two episodes, we'll have a full level 11 front line. Then it'll look more like this. We will have the Warhammer lads will then move to the outside flank. And all four of these guys will be using two-handed Warhammers. The three guys in the middle, the torturers, switching between weapons as needed. In the back line, we've got our bannermen. We've currently got two polearm users and archers. That's going to be four archers eventually. But the polearm users will be in reserve. Or as and when needed. I should probably power level MK2 just to get him to 11. Anyway, good progress. Very, very.